हेलो ठीक हेलो एक आ रही बहुत ज्यादा अरे तो कैसे बात कर रहे हेलो सर कैन यू हेयर मी कैन यू हेयर मी सर मिस्टर जे विनोद कुमार सर आप मेरे को सुन सकते हैं सर कैन यू हेयर मी ठीक है कहां से कम कर यार उसमें जो डिस्प्ले आता है ना उसमें ये भी पता लग जाता है किस किस का माइक ऑन है मिस्टर जे विनोद के दीवार का नाम सुन सकते हैं All participants are requested to switch off their mics, please. Hello. आ तो रही है सबको दोबारा बोल जी चले अभी आपके साथ दोबारा ज्वाइन करते हैं दूसरे रूम से
आवाज आ रही है आपको जी विनोद कुमार अभी को हो रहा है या अभी तो फाइन अभी तो फाइन ओके हेलो जय हिंद टू ऑल द फेमस वॉरन बफेट हेड सेट यू आर लुकिंग फॉर थ्री थिंग्स जनरली इन अ पर्सन इंटेलिजेंस एनर्जी एंड इंटेग्रिटी एंड इफ दे डू नॉट हैव द लास्ट वन दैट इज इंटेग्रिटी डोंट इवन बॉदर विद द फर्स्ट टू आई on behalf of directorate of vigilance government of delhi welcome all of you on the webinar to celebrate the vigilance awareness week this webinar shall be for two days that is today 27th and tomorrow 28th october today's topic is vigilance administration and the key speaker on the subject is shri j vinod kumar director retired central vigilance commission i may now request i may now request principal secretary vigilance to welcome all the participants and deliver his inaugural address principal secretary sir please thank you thank you bunyad uh good morning to all uh first of all on behalf of uh, department of vigilance i welcome all the part uh shri j binod kumar uh who is agreed to share his views to this webinar despite his busy schedule uh as you are aware we are observing vigilance awareness week every year and we are carrying out uh, various activities to create awareness among the stakeholders to fight against the corruption in public life basically uh this year it is more important because the country is also commemorating independent india at 75 and for that purpose the central vigilance commission has provided a specific theme uh which is provided specific uh, specific theme which is uh, self reliance with integrity as we are aware that integrity is vital for the economic growth and economic growth is uh, keenly related to self reliance uh this year basically central vigilance commission has emphasized on uh, four aspects uh one is uh, basically related to internal housekeeping activities uh which interalia include uh, various uh, references which is being sent by the central vigilance commission we have to dispose of all the uh further information matters uh uh irs uh, uh ssas second advice which is being uh, uh, provided by the central vigilance commission and also the various uh, report uh, of cbi we have to provide our uh, comments so we have to clear all these uh, uh, references which is being provided by central vigilance commission to us beside that our own uh, uh, vigilance issues which is related to the land management which is related to the allotment of houses which is also related to the gender sens sensitivity uh scrutiny of the uh, uh, audit reports etc so we have to see that all these aspects should be cleared during this vigilance uh, awareness week the second most uh, important aspect which central vigilance commission has uh, emphasized is uh, pdp matters a uh, public interest uh, disclosure and uh, uh, protection of the informer resolution 2044 so under this uh, we have to create awareness among the people so that they should come forward to provide information about the corruption and we should uh, 
create awareness among the people that they should not be victimized as their identity should be kept secret. So this is the second aspect the Central Vigilance Commission has uh, emphasized on that. The third aspect is uh, our uh, normal regular activities which we use to take during this uh, vigilance awareness group, which is creating awareness among the masses through various media, uh, that is uh, through internet, through social media, by providing SMS and also the various uh, activities, nukkad nataks, street plays, and uh, uh, debates, and uh, essay writing uh, by students, uh, drawing competitions, etc. So these uh, uh, activities should be continued during this uh, period. The fourth issue which uh, CBC has emphasized is related to the capacity building of the stakeholders. That is very, very important because we have seen that uh, several matters, our uh, decision makers, uh, which is uh, basically related to our education and uh, health department, they are not aware of the basic uh, principles of procurement, etc. So these are the issues which need uh, to be addressed uh, uh, during this week. We have to provide uh, training, we have to build their capacity so that they can deal very effectively with uh, this uh, procurement issues. So in uh, brief, I would say that uh, we have to create uh, awareness among the masses, among the uh, stakeholders, and carry out uh, uh, various activities uh, which can uh, in, uh, infuse a sense of uh, confidence among the uh, pupil so that they can come forward for uh, informing uh, corrupt activities in the public offices. So this is my opening remark, and uh, now I, I would request uh, uh, Sri J. Uh, Vinod Kumar to take over the platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, respected uh, Principal Secretary, uh, all heads of departments and uh, other participants who are there, uh, you all are aware that uh, the CBC, since the year 2000, started observing this Vigilance Awareness Week with a specific theme. This year, we have, when since we are celebrating 75 years of independence, self-reliance with integrity at 75 India. Now, self-reliance, if you go into it a bit deeper, it says that the government's this thing, growth, make in India, you come to that, and development at a fast pace, which we are, in fact, doing. So there are certain issues which we have also to address the other side if we are to be self-reliant as well as this. Number one comes integrity of all of us, public servants, we all, as we all call it. Three, uh, this, as uh, Sir said yesterday, and just before in his opening, this, the integrity is very important. Generally, it is said that integrity is when a person acts when nobody is observing. Like, for example, if you are walking on the road, you see a bundle of currency. Many times, many people will tend to, you will see here and there, and then bow down and put it in your pocket and walk off. Somebody's money fell off, be it in an auto or be it in a car or a taxi, in an airport or wherever it is. So this is too bad. Generally, it should be if you are honest, you should call somebody, give it to the CIS or for the police. Police also, you know, you have to be careful, you have to get an acknowledgement, otherwise they'll appropriate it. General tendency, don't feel bad across it's less because police in India has turned to be the most corrupt agency across all the states for several surveys done in the past by independent organizations. But it's not so, but but some are. So that is what is integrity. Coming to integrity, integrity has also got two aspects for us as public servants. One is while in office, and one is while you are in your personal. Always when I go for any lecture, I tell that for others other than vigilance people, uh, I tell them CVC, CBI, audit, all these agencies, you know, when you go to the PSUs and banks forums, they say that earlier in the 90s, they used to say these three C's are preventing us from working. We are independent, we are autonomous. These three, I ask them, you tell me, give me a nice case, well, what, how many cases, you give me the figures. I have got a database in CVC, I used to carry that figures last five years, 10 years, of top level, because our jurisdiction, the PSUs, is general managers and above. Like I, IA's office is under service, group A and above, below is not there. 
So this jurisdiction of the CVC, if you take it in total, of the total 75 lakh employees, excluding the Army, Navy, and Air Force inform, uh, uniformed people who are covered under the Army Act, it's around 2 lakhs, just less than 2 lakhs. The group A officers, all 43-odd services, the All India services, autonomous bodies, banks, all 248 PSUs, everything, financial institutions, RBI, SEBI, everything put together, it's just around less than 2 lakhs of the total 75. Now, we are only focusing on the higher excellence of the bureaucracy. So this is a focus area where we have been doing. And since the 90s, the commission has been focusing not on catching people, that is, we call it punitive vigilance, but on preventive vigilance, which has served a lot and a lot of improvements have happened in this. I know every each and every sector, I can give you examples as how it has improved this. It's like a management tool, we call it in the PSU in the banks. I'll just tell you about our experience in 1999. Uh, Mr. Vittal was the CVC then. The meeting was being held in the commission. All CMDs of banks, the RBI representative, the governor, deputy governor, the finance secretary, the revenue secretary, all people, the IBA chairman, everybody was there. This was a time when Citibank, Standard Chartered Bank, HSBC and all were computerizing with ATMs. Just ATMs were coming in the metros. And ledger posting machines, not the today's computerization, ledger posting, advanced ledger posting machines were coming, electronic machines. Our banks didn't have money. Some had money, some didn't have money, some were into losses. The government was extending any help. But international agencies were there to give funds and aid grant. With, but with others, you have to give it back, not free. So unions were resisting computerization because the bank unions are very strong. They thought they'd lose jobs. Mr. Vittal said, what do I say? The, the SBI chairman, Mr. Verma, at that time, Ms. Verma, he requested CVC. Sir, please help us. In what way? He said, sir, you issue a directive. Immediately, Whittle had a habit. He had a, a tape, small tape recorder. He opened it, and he used to talk on that. The meeting is going on. It went for one and a half hours. The dictation was given. Orders were typed, and it was signed and issued by the CVC there and distributed to everybody and put on the website. And the commission started monitoring the progress. Wherever banks didn't have money, it was arranged through FIs and all things. We assisted in every front. And what you see today, the banks, if they are surviving, the NPA aspect is a different thing, what frauds and all, that's a different story. But if they're surviving, it is because of that. Old bankers will still vouch for CVC's initiative. Let's come to e-procurement, reverse auction. Cartels, all their problems in your procurement. But this is also coming to early 2004. First was e-payments, we said checklist payments. Cut the interface of third persons running around in the organizations who are getting payments checks. You know, all firms, contractors, unka log her organization mein gumta phirta rahenge file move karte rehte the to bill payment system gail introduced it gas authority of india we asked everybody to do it today everything is electronic even our salaries used to be manual government came in 2004 we said do electronic payments banks and psu started it but government we could make electronic payments of salary only in 2009 or 10 the government instructions of meti and finance the department of expenditure came in only 9 and 10 Procurement also, e-procurement also, 2004 we said. Reverse auctions. I'll tell you an example. I, when I, I was working in ONGC on deputation in the vigilance. First 10 contracts. Contracts means each and every one are over 1,000 crores. 2,000, 6,000 crores, huge in Bombay High. From the pre, when it, it, it reverse auction was sorted, in the first 10 contracts, there was a saving of 120 crores from the previous year. Normally, it's a 5 to 7% increase in the next year. So if you see the saving, it's around 250 crores. It's a small amount for ONGC, but it matters. So what coming back to integrity, always we do in our personal this, we are very careful about money. I give an example of your servant, maid servant buying tomatoes and coming home, and your wife asking questions. When tomatoes are at 20 rupees, she'll come and say, it's, I got it for 40 rupees. The servant is grilled. But while you are in office, at a middle level position. When the clerk who gets stationaries or whatever your daily use things, pens or this thing, if you buy 10 pens, these sort of dot pens, if MRP on the box is 10, 10 rupees, the stationary band gives you the packet of 10 or 20 for 30%, 25% less. For children, if you have bought stationary, you but the bills will be at MRP, even today. If it is in numbers, thousands it may be brought. We don't, that officer, the accounts or finance officer, whichever is small, no one never question the person. We simply sign. 
So why we all have a different dispensation, one in office, one for your personal finance? Why, why, why have this? Why we have we have these double standards? Same person. So my money is important, but the government public money. So this is where it comes in. Integrity, same sort of integrity and honesty we should show while in your work also, which is missing to a certain extent. I won't say all are this. And in researches of corruption across the world. It is said that in every ecosystem, even in our extended family, extended family and friends, if you have a look, take around 100 people, aapka, mera, sabka, we'll find around 15 to 20 percent totally with integrity, honesty, leading lives. The other side in the whole system of 100, if you, you know, it applies to every ecosystem, every organization, you can also understand. So there will be a 10 to 15, 15 percent totally dishonest. They will never change. But the target area for CVC and for any vigilance, anti-corruption, this is the middle part. That is the 60% who are, they are generally honest, but given an opportunity, as I said about the currency thing, if you have, they may. Otherwise, they don't demand. They do their work normally, maybe a bit slowly, or this, otherwise this. But they don't deviate. Darte hai, careful hota hai. Initiative may be less, but given an opportunity, they don't mind. Another area is where people are on the verge of retirement. This is proved in India also. We CVC had done a study. You remember in the 1992, we had that Harshal Mehta security scam in the banking industry. Eight, ten banks were involved. Half a dozen PSUs were involved because they had given their money to Mr. Mehta, who invested in the stock market and misappropriated. It didn't come back. That's why the scam got exposed. JPC, everything together, it said it's a Systemic problem, but CBI registered more than 500 cases. So what really, when we did uh, this was, in the banks at that point of time, you didn't have any provision for action after retirement because it's not a pensionable job. Now after 95, it has become pensionable and like our, for us in the government, up to four years after retirement, or if it's misconduct it's within four years of the time you initiate charge sheet you can be proceeded later also. Otherwise, in the banks and the P in PSUs, it is still there. You can't pay because the master servant relationship, it's a contractual employment there, unlike our employment. It goes off. So when we did a study of around 200 odd officials of the banks who were involved in this, everybody was 57 plus and 58 plus around in that age. Otherwise, they had a total clear, honest profile. Neither in the bank's record, CVC's record, CBA, nothing. They were spot on people. Why, why, why it is happening? Why did they fall to that? This of Mr. Mehta who placated them. Just if you think you'll feel that. These are persons who were honest, fine. At the end of the retirement, they look here and there. They will have children who are to be married, children who are to be this. They may not have even a house, own house to live. They may be staying in a government hotel or uh, office accommodation. Remorse sets in. He sees his peers. Somebody will be moving around in a BMW. Or at this end, he started, he joined along with him, same service. But he was into it. So this is created and this is there everywhere. So what was done in the banks was, the financial powers of the bankers less after 58 years was made half. And that also, when you approve that at your level, you have to show to your higher officer and then do it. So this was the measure which was taken to attend to it as a uh, uh, temporary measure to address it at that stage. Then systems were all corrected. So this is LTL on integrity. Now, our program, the focus of preventive vigilance, as we say it, one of the tools for uh, vigilance administration in the country is to focus on this because the honest you need not bother the corrupt you need not bother they'll face their music at any point of time might be you will see that oh they have been money gone but after retirement i have observed around more than 200 people of the whole government of india including your 
DDA and uh, your MCD and GNCTD also. I won't take names. Banks also, PSUs, which some cases which struck you, hit you on your conscience. I observed them after retirement for around seven or eight years. These sort of people. Nobody is happy. They would have minted money. You, many of you may laugh at me. No, I have observed so minutely. I used my means and my this, and I was observing. In the 50, 60, I was very closely through somebody, some contacts, friends, peers, this, this, this. It's a pretty bad situation. Pretty bad situation. Such un, this money, unaccounted or this through illegal money made, it goes like that. I won't tell you the ways. I even have come out with, observed the ways which it went in. Theft he squanders everything. medical So not a single person I tell you I've seen who has accumulated and survived. So if not, this is all nature's play which happens. So even if we feel that others, I'm talking about the other honest and others, we need not address that sort of thing. Now, vigilance administration, the focus, as I told you, is on preventive vigilance. Now, when you come on preventive vigilance, here also today uh, in the VAW this year, the CVC has said PIDP. I'll give, tell something about PIDP and its background. This is known as a whistleblower mechanism in, the, in India. It was implemented in April 2004, designating the CVC as the designated agency to receive and act on written disclosures. So the words, please be careful when you say written, only in written, no email, portal or anything. And there is a policy of seal cover. You address it to the secretary CBC and send it for the public. It's on public notices there on the website. There is no levels like group A or etc. as CBC's jurisdiction is there in the act for getting inquiries done. It can be from the pun against a pun or a driver to the secretary GNCTD or the chairman of DSIDC or vice chairman DDA or MCD any level. Government also like the sector to government of India to the lowest. Bar. Any public servant is the word used. But there are two conditions there in the PDP, which generally it is forgotten. It says that allegations of corruption or misuse of office. Now, corruption, you all understand vigilance what it is. But when you say misuse of office, under the PDP and the whistleblower, everybody thinks it's only corruption issue. Misuse of office is a very wide term. A simple example can be, we all will laugh at me, misuse of your office car. Favoring somebody in transfers promotions. It may not have on paper or upfront it's a vigilance issue or a corruption issue. So this is misuse of your responsibility vested in you with reference to the post you hold. In the whole system, be it in the central government, any organizations, wherever it is, whatever post, be it financial powers, be it administrative powers or controlling powers, whatever it is. So here I'll bring in a small uh, reference. If you see our CCS, CCA rules, rule three, it says that everybody will maintain integrity, absolute integrity, honesty, and the third part is do nothing unbecoming of a government servant, isn't it? Now, this is like misuse of office, unbecoming, it can be anything. Now, there is a proviso also just below. It's there in the PSU, it's there in the banks, it's there in the CCS rules, IAS rules everywhere. IAS, DNA rules, rule 7. So, when you come to it, that the proviso below says that every supervisory officer, government may CCS controlling officer, senior officer shall be responsible for the conduct of the officers under his control. Because many a time in every organization, it is felt that, oh, vigilance ka kaam hai, complaint aage, wo aage, even the administration establishment sets aside, oh, vigilance ko bejda, vigilance karega. It is all belt to vigilance. Vigilance have a limited role, and vigilance has a small setup in any organization. If you have an employee like, let us say, ONGC or Indian Oil Corporation, or any state bank of India, big banks, I'm telling you, having 30,000 to 40,000 employees. A CBO at Joint Secretary level IPS or an IAS officer, plus on, from outside, plus 50 people in the vigilance setup spread across India. You cannot manage. You cannot keep a watch over all these 40,000 people, isn't it? So 
this rule even though it came in the 60s the cbc in every uh, forum the cbc's across the this rule used to emphasize on this to bring in an awareness of uh, for others as a superior officer as a controlling officer if you are writing the acr or par of a junior officer then you are also responsible for ensuring the integrity and on and integrity on his work not on his personal front so this rule itself this so indirectly if something fraud or big thing happens uh, there is a sort of a vicarious liability also or sort of this duty also on the part of senior officers so in other words every senior officer or supervisory officer is a vigilance officer in his own this in his day to day this it's not only a set of 20 40 people like the cvo or principal secretary vigilance or uh, below the secretary vigilance of the limited number of no it's the whole right from the chief secretary down to everybody is responsible the gsid is the chairman to down with so this should be the principle that an apt and this uh, sort of system which would you know at all such like a nam sir <laughs> that sort of thinking sir a beautiful sort of system it should be the rule is there since 60s so this pdp mechanism since uh, uh, 2004 people do complain the commission receives around 1000 to 1200 every year it's been a useful tool good is because there is a fear of anonymous complaints people used to resort anonymous to anonymous since october 2030 the dopt instructions earlier if specific allegations were there we could look into be it administration, be it vigilance or anything. It's a general circular. This has been withdrawn. No anonymous, anonymous should not be touched. But even then, the central government ministries departments, at highest level, secretary and minister's level, even today, mark such anonymous complaints to the CBO and vigilance. And I used to get calls from CBOs. 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 I used to get was it forbids anybody from touching this? I said, don't even read it. Put it in the shredder. In the commission, we used to get 18 to 20,000 anonymous owners complaints every year. Till 2013 end. Now we are simply shredding it. We don't even read it. State government complaints used to come, we used to push it through the portal, scan it, put it in the portal system, application uh, sent to the chief secretaries. Somewhere serious, they used to take action. Some may work. That also a waste of manpower, we stopped it. Now, like anonymous complaints, that also around 15,000 used to go because people don't know where to complain what from the states. Mutation issues, this, that, sales tax issues, all sort of things used to come. That also we have jumped. So what we received today is around 30,000 general complaints. We act on a very selective this. Around 2%, 200 to 250 only, we send it to the CBA and the CBOs, 700 odd CBOs across the country. Like that in the PDP, I'll tell you if 1,000 are received, around 100 to 125 is what we take cognizance. That is after a person complains, good specific information. And uh, 20, if, it's, if I say uh, from warning to dismissal, that is, if it's something it has resulted in a warning, written warning to dismissal, the extreme penalties. 30 to 35%, it happens in that. That's the study we did. That much it doesn't happen in other companies. So these are insiders, these are stakeholders, these are contractors or vendors who went there, This they have a route. This has a history also visible over in the US. Ra Ralph Nadal was an act civil activist in the 1970s in the US. He only started blowing through. But in the US and other developed countries, it's not on corruption alone because corruption is a low priority area in developed countries. Only in developing countries, it's an issue like China, India. It was in Korea in the 70s when it was coming as an electronic giant. Height, it was the height of corruption. So when countries develop at a fast pace, corruption also goes at the same speed. And later on, it will stabilize once countries reach a particular level. So that has been the trend. It was in the America in the early 20th century the Korea in the 70s and now it's happening in like Mexico, India, China, Brazil, these sort of countries where they are also developing. The so corruption is more so we have to be careful, we cannot afford. And why it is important in the sense and integrity is important is good business practices in this is because 
our banks, our PSUs may not be uh, per se GNCTD, but you are some organizations which are doing some commercial this. If you have the mandate, like BHEL, NTPC, ONGC, etc., banks have started moving abroad as big branches no, no more in African countries as well as in Europe, not in America. Which there is tremendous scope. But if you go there, I'll tell you an example of Indian Oil Corporation. No, the State Bank of Baroda. Recently, it's happened. You have also read in the papers. It is two years back. Had a branch in Johannesburg, Africa. Two brothers from our Mirat UP, the Gupta brothers, we call it, were like our Ambani's and this in South Africa. You know, South Africa, the president had to resign. His family was involved in corruption. Every contract, be it a work, civil, procurement, a cut used to go to this Gupta brothers. And they used to give it bribe the higher bureaucracy right from the president. He had to resign and he's facing corruption. He's in jail. State Bank of Baroda, who were having an account, they had to close down the branch. But for indulging in money laundering and this under the South African Act, I don't know Bank of Baroda will end up with how much amount of fines. It will be tremendous. I don't know whether they'll be able to bear it because internationally, like in the FCP, a foreign corrupt practice of America for US companies. Also, if India goes there and as a subsidiary to work, something like the UK, the Bribery Act is very tough. We have also on that lens recently in 2018, the government of India, due to international pressure and convenience, and since you want to branch abroad for business, that is our country's the self-reliance model that after that we will be even competing with foreign countries, exporting like China. So that is the focus. If that has to be achieved, we require strict laws and strict implementation. This is what is ahead of us. So we are changing, addressing it on many fronts. Many things have been done. We are a party to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. We are generally compliant in majority of the articles, 70 odd articles. Uh, a peer review was done two years back. It's a, two countries come into a peer, we are compliant. The second cycle is coming up this year and or next year early. DOPT is the nodal minister. I was a part of the, this, that's why I'm telling you. Just not compliant on two areas, that is bribery in private sector, Article 12 of the convention. That is inside Tata Birla and this, they're employees. Internationally, they're also like us. We are got PC Act. Standards should be there, there also. This is the global requirement. The company as an entity, as well as their employees, be it an agent or even a liaison agent. Like the US FCPA, a fully owned subsidiary, let us say the name Walmart in India. Walmart, a subsidiary, 100% subsidiary, has an Another subsidiary in Sri Lanka, Indian subsidiary is created in Sri Lanka, let us say, or in Maldives. And they have got engaged an agent, agent, not a regular employee, a liaison agent or seller or redistributor or reseller or whatever name you call it. If he bribes any person in Sri Lanka or Maldives or anywhere, the main subsidiary in US is fully responsible. That is the stretch of the act, the ambit of the act of FCPA in US. Similarly is the UK Bribery Act. I'll tell you an example. Like if anybody of us has a casual dinner with a contractor or a supplier, a government supplier, that is barred under the UP Bribery Act, UK Bribery Act. You cannot even have a social order. This you cannot accept any gifts. We also have rule, but this implementation, it's pretty bad. You cannot be so intrusive also. People don't report. It requires that if you receive anything, you have to report. I remember your case. I won't take the name. You know it. Everybody knows it. Very famous case done by CDI. A laptop. Lake Ek, IAS officer. Isn't it? Apple iPad. So these things now, to trace things are very easy. You would have gotten it at that, that moment. But if you go back to trace it, it's very easy. Earlier bank frauds, when money used to be laundered here and there to shells companies abroad, big groups used to do it. Today also it's happening. Money trial was very difficult. Today with computerized IT, sitting in your bank here on your desk, you can know the money where it moved. Cayman Islands, gap, British Virgin, gap, either gap, Singapore, either gap. Everything can be known in minutes. So you cannot 
do anything on that. Earlier it was untraceable. Like Bofors money till now we couldn't. Toji Spectrum till now from Malaysia. It went from India to Malaysia, 800 crores to G Spectrum, and came back to India in Sun TV and SpiceJet. Invested 880 crores. That one case is still pending by CB because when it went from India to Malaysia, that first link, because in that country, an Indian third generation Tamilian is like our main influencers or whatever, sorry to use the word, very influential people. He controls a Muslim country. Uh, uh, caste-based country, Malaysia, big country. So CBI went up to the Supreme Court, LR sub karke, but no chance. After that, Cayman Islands, Bermuda, wherever it went and came back, every money trial is there. Ten years back, we have got it. So that case, it's not going further. The main. So it all depends on cooperation we have to do. So trailing, trailing, tracing is very easy now. It's not that we take and so some friends, some this will be there. So I would only say that everybody should be honest. There are ways to do it. And inner engineering, what the CVC has said this time is, it's not even the pendency sir, of vigilance alone. That is, we have to regenerate our systems. I'll tell you one simple example, which I experienced six months back. After retirement in April, I moved from Delhi to Mysore. And now I'm talking to you from Mysore, from my house here. I had a DDA flat, which I bought in 98, allotment, direct well, in my wife's name. It cost me, including registration, 10 lakhs. I sold it during COVID times, a bit of less of this. Got a good amount. Sold it to somebody, a MCD poor teacher. I didn't bargain much, whatever. He said, OK, take it. And it was fully white. Others were offering, even today, after all this demonetization, coming, popular dealers were coming and telling me, sir, itna paper, itna nahi. Circle rate pe karenge, registry baki aapko mein. No, I don't want a single pie. <laughs> Number two, it's difficult. Now. It don't, it's not required. We are contented that you don't require much. I said, then this man came, he took his son, sent money from abroad, some GPF advance. GNCT days, unko bichare ko GPF advance milne ke liye late ho gaya. And my registration, my whole process got delayed. Ola saab udar bhi dena padta hai. Sorry to say. Now, let's just offshoot. Registry, I was also, it was my wife's name. Not a single pie we paid there, nor he paid there. It went smooth. Ah, three times server were down. On the fourth visit only, we could do. That's a different. Your Gita colony, SDM's office registry. Three visits, the servers were down. There is something with the problem. It's a regular problem. So I sold it there, came here in Karnataka, Mysore, got a flat. Almost around the same price, less from 20 lakhs loan from SPA. We got a house. I had to pay one lakh bread. I resisted, so we but the contractor, the builder says, sir, I'll give you, do not give it, I'll give it. Karnataka is the country. I'm comparing Delhi and Karnataka. Why? Because Karnataka was a state which was claimed to be the first in introducing electronic registry and your land deeds. First. I had seen at that time when it was my CVC sent me at that time to Karnataka, then CVC. Mr. Shankar said, Oh, Karnataka may sub hua, just go and have a look. Two of us came. We saw it, the <laughs> state government took us along, showed two, three sub register offices. It was fine, beautiful flash offices with good chairs and AC and tea being served there for people to go there, seller buyer. And they used to take name, token number, then you go sign, put your this, uh, all your fingerprint, everything is taken, and it's like within half an hour, you are given the printed this, this. It was a wonderful experience. I thought it was fine. So with saying that in mind, 10, 15 years back that I came here. Nothing moves here. So I was comparing with Delhi. What was my this there? Should, you should compliment also what's happening. Without this happen, fine. Another is moving my car. Due to COVID, NOC has also been made online by GNC today and some states because it is motor vehicle segment. I applied, I got it, sitting at home. I come here, produce it. They're saying in nature, like I said. And it's an eight-year-old Tata Etios small car. Because daily you can't drive it after 10 years. There were no buyers there. I said, Chalo, it's a good condition, very good way. They saying, sir, Amara is up, you'll have to get eight-year-old car, eight plus ninth year. You have to pay 68,000 tax. When I bought it in Delhi, I paid 32,000 cost. 
So they have a method, Maharashtra and Karnataka, ideally a bit of present. Maharashtra and Karnataka, the highest taxes. Now that's not alone. Uske upar so here, what I have, even my license, I got it transferred from Delhi. It was expiring, I got it through somebody. And it's all half they have uh, made it electronic, half without interface. They You have to go there, pay the money that, that they have not made it electronic. So when you go there, these employees, full of agents. So I tell you, these two, as many I can tell you like this, Delhi is far, far any day better. I should, that I should admit. Even the other states, like even Andhra Pradesh also, it's pretty bad. But outside their term, that's most IT savvy and out IT the citizen centric. It's because wherever, you know, when uh, citizens experience when they were public service, like your land, DD, what it was when I got a flat, I know the times. I had to go up to the CV and tell him, and then only I could go to the papers. But things have improved now. A lot of, lot of improvement has happened. That we have to admit. Your MCDs, the NDMCs, the licenses. Traffic, we want police also. Many areas, we are, I think Delhi, we are far, far ahead of other. This better. But there will be small this when you, are, you have wrong papers, you are not proper with your papers, then these agents come and do these sort of this are there. But if you are everything, there's no issue. So we should move from that and more, more concentrate on these sort of citizen centric services, wherever be it sales tax or trade tax or wherever the interface should be totally cut off. So that is what digitization, what the center government of India is focusing on with digitization and all these things. Uh, I'll tell you an example of Kandla Port Trust, which had 18,000 hectares of land and one man, a state manager to manage this. There were hundreds of court cases going across the country. Leases were granted 50, 60 years back, not revised. They didn't have proper records of land records. It was a terrible state of affairs. They have got 8,000 8, hectares of salt land, which are given on contract for salt farming. Oh, Kachka area. So as a project, we took up with the shipping ministry and got it computed. This is around seven years back. Now it's fully digitized. All land records, court cases, everything. Fully digitized. Like that, all port trusts have. Because port trusts have got a lot of area. The army cantonment boards. Encroachment, Oil India and ONGC, they take land and they leave it like that. You can give it back to the government or sell it if you don't get oil or anything down there. This man encroachments what you don't manage, they don't bother. So this everything has been mapped, digitized land records. Wherever you have this, you don't know sitting here, you don't know uh, in a corporate office or down in one place, you don't know where what is happening. So, but these things have been achieved on many fronts, like uh, container corporation and customs. Mm -hmm. In the name of scrap and used cloths, ammunitions and guns are coming in. I don't, I'm not taking any other names because you cannot afford to check 100% all containers. It's humanly not possible. CCTV, you can't peep in unless it is opened. Sample check 10% is what Container Corporation or Customs does. That don't help us. Currency is landing wherever we are doing also in your organization. The great very tech savvy nowadays. They may be graduate hold also in things like this, but they are very good in this. So focus should be watch this. Then here comes the play of rotation from posts. You shouldn't allow a person three four years go beyond post. Where are sensitive finance or that sort of public dealing? We require regular this, and all senior officers should be very careful on this. The PNB case is a case in point. The, a deputy manager level sitting at Bombay's Brady branch of Punjab National Bank. For 16 years, he was transferred four times. The then chairman co influence it was cancelled. And what they're staring at now, 8,000 to 10,000 crores loss. Just one person, small, small link at lowest. Deputy manager says, probation officer is eight level up, second level. He could play havoc. So the complexity in this is also more. It is a mechanism, uh, uh, procurement, this IT computerization. Along with that, you have to have application and audit of the systems also. The procurement for coal was done, but then they got a private party in, and the private party was behind sharing information of tenders and prices back end. So the procurement system should be audited by STQC, government approved thing, not by any Ernest and Young or KPMC or that sort of people, by responsible government certified authorities 
because you don't know. We don't, as a journalist, we cannot think for this, to go into areas where we are this. So this will be my, from my experience, I'll tell you. I told a lot of examples I told you because just to, uh, it gives an idea of where, what can happen and that sort of things. So vigilance administration is also becoming complex. So people should be more savvy, more this, and we should amend our rules. Wherever if you're experiencing, like many of people, 100 odd people are there. If 200 odd people are there right now, you can see. But if with 10 to 12 years experience, let us say you're working in sales tax, in health, or the lands, revenue, whichever field in the government. So if some processes are there, which is 15 years, 20, which is creating problems. So generally people don't talk out in official meetings, lower level, middle level people, in PSUs, banks, in the whole government of India. That's what this. Give them the comfort level and ask them to tell their experiences. What's the problem in data Why is it getting delayed? Why this is happening? Opening up. And as seniors, we should also accept that, examine that issue. I had observed a CMD of a PSU. Who, he was there five years in a big company. Who used to receive mails, 30,000 employees, 30,000. He said, that, write to me any problem, any of this. Ideas and suggestions for improving the functioning of the organization. 200 mails he used to get regularly. He used to sit till 3 up to 2, 2.30 in the night and attend to each and every mail daily. And five or six he used to pick up from that, which impresses him. And he used to send to the various heads of the departments and said, give me a feedback on this. And two, three days was the time given or a week for this, depending upon the complexity. They used to come back. It was good. The suggested person, small level people, good young boys, engineers. They used to be sent for, uh, sending for a foreign training to enhance his skills in the particular area where he is. Because money you can't compensate, you can't promote him out of the way in a PSU. So such innovative means this were being given, not money. Our whistleblower, coming to our whistleblower mechanism also, PDP also, an act has been passed by parliament because uh, the PDP resolution, the last line, if you see the PDP resolution 2004, it says, it shall... Once the whistleblower uh, uh, law is passed, the PDP will lapse. So technically, it has been saved. The Whistleblower Act has been passed uh, on the last day of the last government along with the Lokpal Act. It had some errors and problems. So the ratification, the this asset by the president got delayed. And uh, it was has been notified on the 14th of May 2014 only for general information of public. The day when it comes into effect, Usi may lika gas at notification. So there's a general impression that Whistleblower Act has come. So I am telling you the correct situation. It will has to come. So the amendment bill is before parliament. Rajya Sabha has passed it, Lok Sabha has to consider it. Because even it got covered the defense security issues as well as the external, external affairs issues with other countries. So that is a complex area. So that is being excluded. Amendment bill. So this is how it is. So otherwise, it's still the PDP resolution. And in August 13, the Government of India Joint Secretaries and CVOs in the 80 odd Government of India departments are also designated authorities to receive. So 80 plus one CVC is the agencies where people can report. But that 80 agencies may agree with this Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India. Most CVO ko Joint Secretary ko only for the departments under the ministry only. Not for Petroleum Ministry, PSU or a bank you can send. Only for their administrative control that you can send. Uh, if I, I don't know if I've exceeded my time or anything. So that's what I'll tell you, advise you. Be be frank, honest, bold, take your distance. If you record one or two lines, why you wrote that decision, no audit, vigilance, or anybody will question in your line functions. This should be conveyed to everybody. Because what happens is audit, vigilance, when you see on postmortem, you can find problems. But if a decision, if it is explained in two, three lines, fine, nobody will. So please take this, be bold, don't have any fear of police, AC, your ACB or this. Work honestly and do your job for the nation. That's what I do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vinodma, thanks for sharing your wide experience and, uh, you know, precious thoughts with us. Uh, thanks again. Uh, dear listeners, uh, this concludes our today's session of webinar and we shall be meeting again tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Please join us. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.